Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, bless Captain Isaac here to my right. Soldier Kashaw. All right, so today we are going to be talking about the 4th of July, also known as the 4th of You Lies, all right? That's what I said it, You Lies, okay? This is a holiday that's celebrated throughout the whole earth, um, mainly by these Edomites, all right? So-called Caucasians, and a lot of blacks and Hispanics take part in this holiday. Get me um, Revelation. Let's open up with Revelation 18 and 4, verse 1. Okay, what you're going to realize is this holiday has nothing to do with you so-called blacks and Hispanics. Let's read it out the Bible. Come on. The book of Revelations, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So the Most High God is commanding us to come out of America. And this is not talking about physically. It's talking about spiritually, mentally come out of her. Come out of her holidays. Okay, come out of her theologian institutions, her doctrines. Okay, 4th of July has nothing to do with you so-called blacks and Hispanics here in America. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Read. And that ye receive not of her plagues. Uh huh. And ye receive not of her her plagues, okay? No, not partaking in her sins, so you won't receive her plagues. Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs 3.31, because we know many of you, you're going to go, you're going to do the barbecue thing in a remembrance of 4th of July, right? You're going to go to the cookouts, the fireworks, and so forth. Not remembering that you so-called blacks, where were you during the 4th of July? You were still in shackle and chains, you were still in captivity, all right? Meanwhile, you had the British and the American colonies fighting against each other for freedom, okay? You were slaves in, in Britain, and you were slaves in America during that time, okay? Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. So the Bible tells us to envy thou not the oppressor, and choose some of his ways? And choose none of his ways. The Bible tells us to choose none of his way, not one. One is too many, too much. Mm -hmm. Okay? So who did, who did we learn the 4th of July from? We learned it from the so-called white man. Okay? When he got his freedom from Britain, we were still in shackles and chains as slaves. Mm -hmm. Get me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. You hear that? So the Bible says we are going to serve our enemies. When the American colonies broke off from Britain and had their war, they were no longer serving their enemies. However, we were continuing to serve our enemies because we were stuck here in this land of captivity called America. All right, read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Most High sent the nation of Edom up against us. Come on. In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. Thirst. Come on. And in nakedness. So whether it was food, drink, or clothing, we would have to serve our enemies. Come on. And in want of all things. So does the part that I wanted. It says in the want of all things. Things, meaning whatever you learned, whatever you wanted, you had to learn it from the so-called white man. Where did we learn the 4th of July from? The so-called white man. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Did we have yokes of irons on our necks in 1776 scattered throughout the Americas, scattered throughout the Caribbean? You better believe it. Whether it was brass or iron, we had yokes of iron on our necks. When this man, the nation of Edom, was fighting for freedom against Britain, we were still slaves. Now you want to run around and, and, and eat Nathan Franks and hamburgers in the honor of the white man freeing himself from another white man. Mm. Crazy as hell. Y'all crazy as hell. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he have destroyed thee. What is the proof that we're destroyed? You so-called blacks who are looking at this video right now, running around. Uh, firecrackers, right, running around barbecuing on a, in, in honor of the 4th of July, thinking that you're free. 
Meanwhile, everybody on earth is looking at you like, oh, look at these dumb niggas. They actually think they're free. They actually think the 4th of July has something to do with them. Not knowing that you've been lied to your whole life, that you are still in captivity. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Get me uh, Daniel 7, verse 7. So now we're going to go into the prophecy. Is the 4th of July in the Bible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, mm -hmm. dreadful and terrible. And so it says, behold, in a night vision, I saw this what? And behold, a fourth beast, uh -huh. dreadful and terrible. Dreadful and terrible. The forefather Daniel is given a prophecy on the different kingdoms, okay, which the Israelites would be in captivity. Okay, read. And strong exceedingly. So that fourth beast is making reference to Rome. 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 Come on. And it had great iron teeth. Mm -hmm. It devoured and break in pieces. Uh huh. And stamped the residue with the feet of it. Come on. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Come on. And it had ten horns. Now it's going into America. It says it had ten horns. Same thing it says in the book of Revelation. Ten horns. What is that? The ten common markets. Come on. Verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, mm -hmm. before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Okay. So now it's... Uh, re repeat that again. Repeat that again one more time. Verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold... There came up among them another little horn. Then came up among them, the them there's making, to, making reference to the ten horns that was mentioned. Came up among them another little horn, come on. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. What three horns were plucked up by the roots? Spain, France, Britain. And out of Britain comes America. So we're reading about the 4th of July in the Bible. This is the prophecy for those of you who don't believe that the Bible's a read a real book. Read it again. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, mm -hmm. before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, mm -hmm. and a mouth speaking great things. And in, in a mouth speaking great things who, against who against god against christ the angels and the israelites all right so that's what we're reading prophecy in the bible the bible's a real book what you're gonna find out is that your brain has been the myth all along all right why because you've been inherited lies you've been taking in a whole bunch of lies your whole life okay let's move on from that let's go to um get me you already read proverbs 331 right yes, all right get me uh baruch 3 and 8 but before you get Baruch 3 and 8, let's pull this article. Let's pull this article by America's dearly beloved Laura Ingram to show you what America thinks about you so-called blacks in this country. All right, you got me, Jonathan? You going to read it? Yes, sir. All right. Laura Ingram, Ingram dismisses reparations. No do-overs. We won. You lost. That's that. No do-overs. We won, you lost, and that's that. Let me read that again. No do-overs, we won, you lost, and that's that. 1776, when he was fighting for his freedom, you were still in chains. Okay? And they're saying that we lost the war, but I thought we were citizens. I thought this was a great melting, plot, uh, melting pot. Everybody come together, hold hands. A democracy, but she's saying, no, you are casualties of war. You are spoils of war. You are servants to this so-called white man here in this country. And this is what they're spewing in 2019. For those of you who think things done changed, we're showing you that it has not changed. You are yet this day in your captivity. Let's read the article. Fox News star Laura Ingram waded into the ongoing debate over reparations for descendants of slaves during her podcast on Thursdays, on Thursday, by proclaiming there are no do-overs after a conquest. Talking to Kentucky State professor and hate crime hoax author Wilfred Riley about the recent House hearing on reparations, Ingram played a clip of author Taneshi Coates 
taking Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to task for saying reparations are unnecessary because Americans elected Barack Obama as president. Mm. Come on. After praising McConnell's remarks, Riley stated that the logistics of paying reparations will be far too difficult before wondering if Native Americans would then be next to request compensation over their treatment. I mean, obviously, both white and black soldiers frankly took this country from the Indians, the first people, Riley added. People would argue that the whole world, and I would, the whole world has been reshaped by people taking other people's land. Ingram weighed in. It's called conquest. Mentioning past empires. It's called what? It's called conquest. It's called conquest. You blacks, you have been conquered in America. Like I said before, you are spoils of war. You are still captives. Come on. Mentioning past empires and how there was a totally different map in the past. Ingram, whose own brother thinks she is a monster, then complained that they want to live in a fake world, presumably talking about liberals. As Trump always says, you don't get do-overs, she declared. No do-overs, that's it. There was an argument sometime, I think it was in the 1980s. There was a quote, you won, we lost, that's that. Describing world politics, we won, you lost, that's that. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Let's get Baruch 3 and 8 and then pull up the next article for me, Jonathan. The book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Now, what does the Bible say about this? Come on. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Are we free? It says no. Behold, you are yet this day in your captivity. Okay? As long as the Israelites are not ruling this earth, we are in captivity. That's what the vision of Daniel was about. When you read the vision that he had with the statue for Nebuchadnezzar, all those different kingdoms, Israel was always on the bottom. Now we are under the bottom of the beast with ten horns. Okay, come on. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity mm -hmm. where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. Are we subject to payments? You're absolutely right. See what happens if you don't pay your taxes. Come on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. And the reason being is because our forefathers sinned. That's why we're here in captivity. But I know some of y'all thinking, nah, but we got politics. We have Republicans. We have conservatives. We have liberals. Is that so? Really? So you think that the liberals really think contrary to what this lady say. They might put on a good show to get your votes. But what happens when they get in office? They turn right back to the devil that the Bible speaks of. Let me show you. Let's pull up the next article, please. It says, Senate Democrats wish talk on reparations would go away. But I thought Democrats was for black people. Let's read that. Senate Democrats wish talk on reparations would go away. Senate Democrats are not fans of legislation on reparations for slavery which has become a hot topic in the 2020 presidential campaign. Democratic lawmakers acknowledge that slavery is a terrible stain on the nation's history and that African Americans were subjected to unjust and racist laws for decades after abolition. But the question of figuring out who should pay for economic harm... You should pay, you damn devils that the Bible speaks of. Who the hell had us in captivity? You. You. You are a product, you are living off the, the, the benefits and advantages of your forefathers. You should pay. What do you mean, who should pay? Come on. But the question of figuring out who should pay for economic harm occurred over hundreds of years uh, is a political landmine. You could stop right there. So I just wanted to show you that, guess what? There's no difference between these Democrats and these Republicans, all right? Give me Isaiah 32, verse 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, mm -hmm. nor the churl said to be bountiful. Mm -hmm. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. So what did God call the liberals? Vile. Vile. They are all vile. The only difference is 
the conservative Republicans, white supremacists, they'll stick the knife in you while you're looking. The liberal Democrats, passive white supremacists, they'll wait until you turn your back. That is the only difference. Okay, that is the only difference. That's why we got to repent so we could come up out of this. Give me Isaiah 49, 26. The book of Isaiah. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. So this is the promise to the Israelites if we repent and keep God's commandments in the faith of his son. Read it again. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Mm. And they shall be drunken with their own blood mm -hmm. as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. You hear what God said? He's going to redeem the mighty one of Jacob by vengeance. Vengeance for who? The Israelites. Where? Here in America. Why? Because you are still captives yet this day. Give me Hebrews 11, 13 to 16. Hebrews 11, 13 to 16. So we got to repent, y'all. Stop following these wicked customs. All right, of America that has nothing to do with you. The Most High has not given us any commandment to celebrate a Fourth of July that has nothing to do with you. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. So you have a lot of people that are going to die in this truth and they're going to have great faith. Come on. And embrace them. And confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We have to confess that we've been exiled out of our land of Jerusalem. And we are strangers and pilgrims in this earth. America is not your homeland. You are not free. You have to confess it and be honest with yourself. Come on. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And when you say such things, you say plainly that you seek a country. That country is Israel. All right. That's what we seek. Come on. And truly, if they had been mindful of that, that country, if our forefathers were mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. So we got to repent so the most High could bring us back into our homeland. Come on. But now they desire a better country. Now that, we're going to desire a better country, which is going to be the whole planet Earth. Come on. That is and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, mm. for he hath prepared for them a city. You hear that? For he had prepared for them a city. All right. So with that, we're going to close it out. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us.
more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.